EUS-guided jejunojejunostomy to facilitate ERCP in a patient with unique Ruin-Y gastric bypass anatomy. Our patient was a 52-year-old female who presented with an indwelling percutaneous transhepatic biliary drain which was placed for concern of cholelithiasis in the setting of prior cholecystectomy. The patient initially presented to an outside hospital with elevated liver chemistries, along with right upper quadrant and epigastric pain. She had a remote history of vertical sleeve gastrectomy converted to ruin y gastric bypass for medically complicated obesity. She had recent acute pancreatitis despite percutaneous transhepatic biliary drain placement, which raised concern for occult biliary pathology. Abdominal ultrasound at referring hospital was notable for common bile duct dilation of 1 cm with intrahepatic biliary ductal dilation. After discussion with the patient and members of the care team, it was determined that further endoscopic therapy was needed. We initially had planned to perform EUS-directed transgastric ERCP, or EDGE. However, due to prior sleeve gastrectomy with conversion to Ruin-Y gastric bypass, there was insufficient target for transluminal access. The procedure was aborted. The patient elected to undergo EUS-guided jejunojejunostomy using a 15mm lumen-opposing metal stent, subsequently followed by transjejunal ERCP. To aid in the creation of the EUS-guided jejunojejunostomy, we injected a combination of saline and contrast using the indwelling percutaneous biliary drain to allow for distension of the small bowel to create a target for EUS-guided access. A therapeutic channel, linear echoendoscope preloaded with a lambs catheter, and a long guide wire was advanced into the jejunal rue limb in close opposition to the jejunal pancreaticobiliary limb. An electrocautery enhanced lumen opposing metal stent catheter was advanced through the small intestinal wall of the rue limb and into the pancreaticobiliary limb. The distal flange was deployed under endosonographic and fluoroscopic guidance into the small bowel. The proximal phalange was deployed under endoscopic visualization within the rue limb. The preloaded guide wire was advanced and coiled into the pancreaticobiliary limb. The lambs was dilated using an 8 mm balloon dilator. A 10 French by 3 cm double pigtail plastic stent was then placed across the lambs. Six weeks following anastomosis creation, the patient presented for transjejunal ERCP. The 10 French double pigtail plastic stent was removed and the duodenoscope was exchanged for a therapeutic gastroscope. The therapeutic gastroscope was advanced through the lumen opposing metal stent and a partially clogged biliary drain was identified approximately 7 cm distal from the lumen opposing metal stent. The gastroscope was advanced retrograde towards the ampulla. The pancreas duct was inadvertently wire cannulated given the percutaneous biliary drain was in place. Contrast was injected to confirm location of the pancreatic duct. The bile duct was deeply cannulated and the high quality cholangiogram showed moderate diffuse dilation of the common bile duct. Otherwise, the entire biliary tree was normal. This was concerning for ampullary stenosis. Following placement of a safety guide wire, the percutaneous biliary drain was removed. Given the retrograde approach of the papilla and inadequate trajectory of the tense sphincter tome, the decision was made to use a triple lumen needle knife to perform a successful freehand biliary sphincterotomy. Following biliary cannulation, balloon sweep with an 8.5 mm balloon revealed sludge but no evidence of stones or strictures. The 11 mm extraction balloon could not traverse the papilla, so balloon sphincteroplasty was performed with a 9 mm biliary balloon dilator. The safety guide wire was then removed, and a 10 mm by 4 cm fully covered self expandable metal stent was placed into the common bile duct. Contrast and bile drained readily. Six weeks later, the patient underwent repeat endoscopy. Using a gastroscope, the lambs was traversed and the bile duct deeply cannulated. Cholangiogram and balloon sweeps were unremarkable. The fully covered, self-expandable metal stent was removed from the common bile duct. 
The gastroscope was then reintroduced and the lambs was removed with a rat tooth forcep. The decision was made to not close the lambs related fistula as the patient desired to gain more weight. Based on the available data, there is a high likelihood the site will heal on its own over time. In conclusion, Patients with vertical sleeve gastrectomy with conversion to Roux-en-Y gastric bypass who develop pancreatic biliary disease create a unique diagnostic and therapeutic challenge. Conventional ERCP is impossible, while alternative options such as laparoscopic assisted or balloon enteroscopy assisted ERCP are technically challenging as well. EUS guided digenogigenostomy permitted for endoscopic therapy of ampullary stenosis and sphincter of OD dysfunction type 1 in a minimally invasive fashion. Therapeutic EUS can be a powerful tool in the management of patients with altered GI anatomy and pancreatic biliary disease. EUS guided digenogigenostomy followed by transjejunal ERCP in altered gastric bypass anatomy was technically feasible and safe in our patient.